Now let's move on to the next segment. Today's children will go on to become the change makers of tomorrow, the power to change the world and transform the lives of millions of people will lie upon them. Uh, this makes me think of Greta, the little Swedish girl who's completely transformed uh, through her activism uh, the lives of many. So how can educators transform institutions into microcosms of a world where change makers can thrive? What can we do to prepare them for a radically different future? Ms. Shrija, founder and CEO of Sparkling Minds, will deliberate on these questions. Thank you. Will deliberate on these questions while discussing the topic, redefining the purpose of learning, creating change makers. Please welcome her, Ms. Shrija. Hello. A very good afternoon to all of you. My name is Shrija Ayer. I am the CEO and founder of Sparkling Minds, and I'm here to share with you three stories of change that our children have created within themselves, for each other, and for the community. Before I start, um, we, about a decade ago, asked ourselves a very powerful question. The question was, what do children need to learn today that will help them be prepared for the unforeseeable, unknowable, elusive, ever-changing future. You see people here talking about it constantly, that the future, jobs are going to be gone, right? Um, people don't know what skills are going to be developed. So when you ask people this question, we asked it to parents, to educators, you would naturally think they would shrug their shoulders and say, I don't know. But that's not the answer we got. We got several answers from people along the lines of communication skills, interpersonal skills, creative thinking, critical thinking, teamwork, thinking, independent thinking, decision making, awareness. And each one of those things made sense. Then we stepped back and we asked ourselves a very different question. We send our children to school every single day to help them learn skills that we think they should learn. We know that they'll need to learn communication skills and critical thinking and creative thinking. But we watch as year on year, they get graded on math, on science, on English. Trust me, none of the 10,000 plus answers over the last decade told us that what they think their children should learn is education, math, science, not even grades. None of them. When asked with that question, they would always answer with futuristic skills. Skills that the children can actually carry and use productively for the future. We took this information and we pieced together the information from the parents and we stepped back and we asked ourselves a very different question. If education was a company today, delivering what it's delivering, after the world has actually started to change and has been changing for a while, the people who are running education as a company, the managers, would be fired. The processes that the education was run on would be rejigged. The people who are working there would be retrained. They'll be rehiring. Marcom would be running saying, oh, you know what? The world has changed. We need to change too. But that's not what we see happening. We see something very different. We see a slow drift of certain schools and certain educational system going in several different directions. As if they're seeing a very different vision of reality. As if they don't agree on which vision of future is going to happen. When we pieced this information together along with what parents were saying, we realized that the one key thing that we know for sure is the elusive nature of the future. And if something is going to be elusive, it's going to be difficult to predict. And what happens when predictability becomes difficult? It's ambiguity. And ambiguity makes it very, very uncomfortable for people. Children, human beings, don't like ambiguity. There's discomfort when you don't know what is going to happen. So we said, what if that could be the key skill? 
children learning to deal with the ambiguity, deal with the change that they know is going to happen, and become change makers. Become change makers within themselves, for each other, for the community that they interact with, and the world at large. Easier said than done. What does it mean for children to become change makers? How do you make children change makers? As education systems, do you hope and pray that as they grow and get out of school, they'll suddenly become change makers? What do you do today to help them cultivate the habit of change making? We said, we wanted it to happen today. We wanted them to feel like change makers today. And what best to do if they could start with themselves. Um, because I could not have one of them come here and tell you personally what it's going to be like, I brought one of their voices to show you how she had become a change maker for herself. So this is so sweet, telling you how she did it. So, we've all heard a version of this poem, haven't we? Before? Yay, it's Saturday! Yay, it's Saturday, I don't want to go to school. Um, or, oh, it's Saturday, um, you know. For her to say, wow, I'm... For her to say, I'm upset because it's a Saturday and I can't go to school. And that too because I love going to school. For her to say, I love going to school um, and I miss it on a Saturday. And that too because uh, she's able to deal with her fears, her narratives and fears of her monster under the bed. Um, that sounds like a change maker to me, somebody who is willing to work on themselves. Little background on her, she, um, when she joined the school beginning of this year, she used to wear a little black hoodie and not be part of any group and just kind of withdraw. Uh, we had to bring her in and we had to uh, coax her to be part of the group. Um, she used to tell herself she's, she's a loser. And on top of it, um, she's... Um, she used to tell herself that everything that she did, the good, the great, the amazing, every single thing that she did, um, there was a critic in her head that would just disparage it and, and, and call it worthless. She is today standing there and saying that because she's learned to talk to that critic. She's, she's working on herself and she's also dealing with her math anxiety, by the way. So that's a big, big achievement for Sosui and every single child like her who's trying to become a change maker um, 
The second story that I have for you is about two other children called Maya and Minakshi. They were very troubled because all the children around them used to talk um, and try to influence them um, about how they looked or how they learned or how much marks they got. And they noticed that not just them, but every single child around them got very easily influenced by what others said and took it upon themselves, changed themselves, um, even listened to what uh, somebody, like a stranger said. Uh, the parents' voices would become theirs, they would change their identity, they did not know how to stand up for themselves. And as troubled as they were, they learned that if they stayed with that discomfort um, and used three powerful tools to work on it, they could use that discomfort and convert it into something powerful. I will let them show you what they did and I'll tell you what the tools are. I knew exactly who I was. Or so I thought. A tall girl with silky hair. A strong, tough boy who didn't care. We heard stories from here and there about all these people. The boy, the girl and some others out there. I knew exactly who I was. silky hair. I mean with earphones dangling around her head. A strong, tough boy who didn't care with the hands of his gang around his neck. We, we heard stories from here and there. Whispers and giggles from around the stairs. About the same girl and boy with a little flair. I, I knew exactly who I was. Or so I thought. A tall girl with silky hair. I mean with earphones dangling around her head and words that come out of her mouth like Shut up! Don't stare! A strong, tough boy who didn't care with the hands of his gang around his head with words expressed as punches and dares. We, we heard, heard stories from, from here and, and there. there. Except this time from the boy and the girl. And not the people who stared. I, I knew exactly who I was. silky hair, who told herself she was mean anyway. A strong, tough boy who didn't care, who told himself he didn't need to be fair. We, we heard stories from here and there, ones that were her and ones that they told themselves. Except, Except this time, they were stories they truly chose. And not the ones they had written themselves into by force. Now, I, I knew exactly who I was. A pretend. pretend. I wasn't a mean girl. I wasn't a jock. I wasn't a nerd. I wasn't a goth. I didn't know exactly who I was. But I am who I choose to be. And no one can define our identity. Little background on Maya Minakshi. Your typical academically successful children, from the face of it, but who get affected too. They get so affected that they felt troubled enough to stay with the discomfort to write a spoken word poetry. And they said, ma'am, we want to do this. We want to tell the story, not just for ourselves, for every single child out there. At least for our friends, let them hear it. Let them see that they have a choice not to believe the stories that others write for them, but to choose their own, to be a change maker in their own right. How did they do this? This could as well be choreographed and written by me, right? It's not. 
<laughs> and it's neither is it choreographed. It's inspired by Sara K and Phil K spoken word poetry. If you people know the origin story, um, they were introduced to it. The rest of it is their work, including the choreography. Um, but they use the three powerful tools that I was talking about. The tools are the power of why, the power of narratives, and the power of connect. And these three tools put together give them the power. These three tools put together give them the power to actually stand up on the stage, to stand up and share what they want to share, to stay with the discomfort when they feel pain, when they feel anguish, and know that if they delve deeper, if they de dealt with their narratives and they connected with their emotions, they can actually do something about that discomfort and create something powerful. The third story I want to tell you um, is about football and failure. Every single person out here who's had uh, played football, soccer, anybody? Hands? Children play football, soccer? Any sport? Nobody played sport? Played sport? Okay, so anybody who played football or has children who play football, you know how excited they can get with their jerseys and how competitive they can get to want to go play, to win, um, to defeat the other team, to get cheered upon. Um, our children, our eight to 10 year olds, also wanted to do the same. They went to a tournament, all prepared, and applied all the rules uh, from their playbook. They maneuvered, they tackled, they held for it. They tried their real, real best to make sure that the other team did not score a goal, but goal after goal after goal, they scored. And they got defeated 9-0. They were gutted. It was a routing defeat. Like They felt like losers, and they didn't know where to go. This was two years ago. Two years later, on October 2nd, 2019, that's this year, they, each one of that team member and several others in the school ran a 12K marathon. And they felt that they had achieved what they had set out to achieve after that loss. Anybody who's run marathon here? Long distance running? Okay, all right. Anybody who's done it knows that 12K for a bunch of six to about 13 year olds is not an easy task to work on. And they did it in record time, unflinchingly too. It was a process. I'm going back two years ago. The routing defeat happened. The children come back to the school and they sit down in a circle and they talk about what happened. They use the power of why to figure out what went wrong. And one of them in the classic way that only children can say things says, oh shucks, you know what? What really, really, really feels bad is that we, could not, we couldn't even step foot into their side of the field. The whole game happened on our side. And that was a moment when the whole team realized that their physical stamina was in a very, very bad shape. You can learn all the strategies and talk about teamwork, but if you don't have the stamina to actually do the running, to, to hold for it, you're not going to, to get anywhere in any sport. And we also realized as we dug a little bit more deeper using the power of phi, that it was not just the physical stamina. They were missing the emotional resilience bit. They were missing the piece about self-belief. And we decided that we're going to use long distance running. Uh, this was in July 2018, that we're going to use um, the, the long distance running format to build all of this in them. In, on October 2nd, 2018, all of our children, including neurodiverse children who, have, um, are on the, who are on the mild autistic spectrum, ran a 6.6 kilometer marathon. Um, and on October 2nd, 2019, this year, all of our children, as well as some parents and some facilitators, ran a 12K marathon. Some of the younger ones did an eight to 10, but most of them ran a 12K marathon. So that picture is from one of them running a marathon. And um, it's, it's an, for children of this generation, when, they, when they're growing up, watching TV, eating a lot of junk food, just physical stamina, core strength are, are words that you can hear um, outside of their space. It is not owned by them. 
and for them to do a 12K marathon, stay with themselves, it took a lot more than just physical stamina. How did they do it? I'll come back to you in a bit. Let's watch how the energy was at the marathon and what happened. Here's the... We are missing a video. We'll come back. Um, sorry. Uh, okay, so what do they do? They use the same three tools, the power of why, the power of connect, and the power of narratives to create an effect for themselves that will ensure that they can actually run that entire time without losing out on their strength, their stamina, their resilience, and building it in that process. Each one of them had a struggle which was different from the other. For some, it felt like a book that they had to read, a book, an unfathomable book that they had to read in order to run. For some, it felt like an, a mountain that they had to climb. For some, it felt like an ocean that they were deep diving into. Um, they had voices in their head that said, you know what, others are better than you, don't do this run. They had voices in their head that said, um, if I just you know, fall down right now, I may not have to do the run. Um, give up, give up, give up, give up, don't do it. We heard all of these voices, they took it, they stayed with it, they asked it questions, they went deep, they figured out what the voices were saying, they connected with their emotions, and they created powerful positive narratives to make it happen. Um, their parents were spellbound. They did not know um, that children could do things like that. Um, it was not a, a daily practice. It was not even something that we pushed them to do. They chose to do it, all for building solidarity to those uh, 12 children who had lost the football match and the whole community benefited from it. So a change making that could start with one person could result in a change that could um, impact another and impact a community. And today, um, I'm here um, with a special request from our children um, who, are, who, who figured out that if they could use these three powers, the power of why, the power of narrative, with, uh, and the power of connect to run a 12K marathon, they can do more. So the next year, that's October 2nd, 2020, they're going to be doing a half marathon. And um, they said if Sparkling Minds, that's one school can, every school can, and if they can, every single child can. So they, are, they have invited every single uh, school or child out here to come participate with them in the marathon next year on October 2nd, 2020, um, and be the change maker within themselves. The, one of the reasons we chose the October 2nd is because it's, it's Gandhi Jayanti, uh, it's, it's uh, Mahatma Gandhi's uh, birthday, and he um, said that be the change that you want to see in the world, and for us, that's the true um, mission that our children have embarked upon. Um, yeah, so every child can run, come run with us next year, October 2nd, 2020. Thank you so much. Thank you, Srija.